Ultra bright monitors are all the rage, and for good reason. They're daylight viewable, you can see them even in direct sunlight. However, there are times where perhaps they're not the best option, and in this video, I'll explain why. Now today I am talking about the Andy Cine C7 Lite monitor. This is a really affordable 7 inch monitor that you can get for your camera setup. But is it something you should consider? Now Andy Cine did send me this monitor to review, but as always they have no say in this final review. So there are four good reasons why you don't need an ultra bright monitor. Number one, it's all about the quality versus price that you get. Obviously, the more money you spend, the better product you're going to get. So when they make ultra bright monitors more affordable, there are going to be certain sacrifices. This is where maybe going for a less bright monitor, if you don't need that ultra bright ability, actually can save you a lot of money. These monitors will often be a lot more color accurate, they'll have better picture quality, and maybe include some features that perhaps the ultra bright monitors in the same price bracket might not include. Secondly, having a bright monitor isn't always an advantage. Sometimes if you're using a monitor that's too bright, say indoors, it can accidentally force you to underexpose. Because you may be looking at the monitor thinking that hey it looks great on the back there but then you suddenly realize that when you get back in post that you shot everything underexposed because it looked too bright on the screen and this is something that's a real danger and something that could be quite risky i also find that ultra bright monitors can wash out the screen a little bit so because obviously they're pushing that brightness so much more than a normal monitor third up is of course power consumption and well it's obvious isn't it if you have a much brighter monitor it is going to consume a lot more power Screens do consume a lot more power than pretty much anything else when it comes to camera equipment. It makes sense, they need to pump a lot of power to write the screen up to whatever level that you need it to. Now the advantage obviously going for a non-daylight viewable monitor is the fact that it is going to have a lot longer battery life on the same size battery. Finally, number four is fan noise. And it might not be something that you think about that often, but actually a brighter monitor is gonna get hotter, so it needs ways of cooling down. And often that is gonna be a little fan in the back. Now the problem with small fans is often they can be quite noisy because they're having to work so hard to cool the actual monitor down. So this is where the C7 Lite comes in. This is a really nice little seven inch monitor, which does tick a lot of boxes and I think would be appropriate for a lot of people. The screen itself is 500 nits, which is not too bad. A couple of years ago, that would actually be considered a pretty bright monitor and certainly usable in a lot of situations. What I really like though, considering the price, the color accuracy is actually quite impressive. It does look really nice on this monitor. I've seen other monitors in a similar price range to this that don't look as good when it comes to colors on the screen. In terms of functionality, I do like the fact that you can use touchscreen or the little dial on the top. It's nice to have both options there because sometimes touchscreens can be annoying um, or you know they cause smudges. As you can see here, it's quite easy to smudge a screen like this. The C7 has all the monitoring features you'd hope to normally see. So things like false color, peaking, uh, waveform, uh, audio controls, LUT input, all of that is here. So you're not really missing any of those functions with this monitor. When it comes to the design and the build of the monitor, it has mounting points on three sides, which is nice. It gives you plenty of options there. It does come in the pack with a little uh, cold shoe as well. Nice small function, doesn't take up any space, which is nice to see. As well as that, it has HDMI in and out. Not all monitors have that, looking at you, Shinobi, um, as well as also DC in and out as well. Speaking of power outputs on this monitor, one really cool thing is on the back with this mount right here. This allows you to put a wireless transmitter onto the back of the monitor. So it actually attaches using the uh, NPF battery plate. It's really cool. So it's basically a reverse battery plate so that when you put your wireless transmitter on there, it actually gets powered from the monitor itself. And it just gives you a really nice little compact setup rather than having to have random attachments or hot shoes attached to the top, making it really cumbersome. This is just neat and tidy, attach on the back there, plug the HDMI in, and suddenly you've got a really small portable director's monitor. While we're on the back, you'll also notice there is no actual fan on this thing at all. It means it's completely silent. That makes it ideal for shooting in a small studio situation where the screen is going to be very close to any microphones. Finally, I think the coolest thing about this monitor is the fact that it can be powered off a USB-C input. That is awesome. 
because this monitor is clearly very power efficient, it only needs a five volt USB-C input, which just gives you so many different options in terms of powering this monitor, whether it's off a V-Lock battery with USB-C, even off just a normal power bank or just plug straight into the wall. Plenty of great options to power this monitor in any situation. The only real negative I could say about the monitor is just the fact that it's quite plasticky. That is where they've saved the money, clearly. They've given you all the functions, they've given you a nice screen, they've given you some really cool extra features that you perhaps don't see elsewhere. But certainly where they've had to save the money is the fact that the actual build of the body is very plasticky. Now the monitor does come with a nice carry case, probably something that I wouldn't personally use, it's quite bulky, but it's nice that you've got something that you can store it in when it's at home. It also comes with the various accessories, like I mentioned, uh, the hot shoe adapter, as well as a very basic sun hood. The MPF battery that is included is also quite exciting because it actually can be charged off USB-C and has a little button to check the status of the charge. So who is this monitor for? Well, as I've mentioned, build quality might not hold up to heavy production use. However, I think this would be an ideal monitor for say YouTubing. You're not gonna have any concerns about it not being daylight viewable because you just don't need that. You could power it off USB-C so it's really handy, you can just leave it plugged into the wall and it just means you've got a nice big screen that you can look at yourself while you're shooting. Because of that wireless attachment on the back, I also think this would be a great director's monitor. Okay, yes, it's not gonna be robust as some of the much more professional options out there, but I think for low budget shoots, this will do absolutely fine. So there you go, four reasons why you don't need a ultra bright monitor and why maybe the C7 Lite might be a good option for you. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe as it massively helps me out. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.